Hi everyone, this is Pastor Kurt. Welcome to the Daily Office. It is Good Friday. Today is week four that we've been doing this. It is day five. The scripture is Matthew chapter 27, verses 33 to 56. It says, when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave him a drink of wine mixed with bitter herbs. When he tasted it, he refused to drink it. So they crucified him. They divided up his clothes by casting lots and sat down to keep watch over him. In the place the written charge above his head. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then they crucified two brigands alongside him, one on his right and one on his left. The people who were going by shouted blasphemies at Jesus and shook their heads at him. So they said, you were, were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, were you? Save yourself if you're God's son. Come down from the cross. The chief priest too and the scribes and elders mocked him. He rescued others, they said, but he can't rescue himself. All right, so he's the king of Israel. We'll let him come down from the cross right now and we'll really believe that he is. He trusted in God. Let God deliver him now. He's that keen on him. After all, he did say he was God's son. Brigands who were crucified along with him heaped insults on him as well. From noon until mid-afternoon, there was darkness over the whole land. In the middle of the afternoon, Jesus shouted out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the people who were standing there heard it and said, This fellow is calling out Elisha. One of them ran at once and got a sponge, filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a reed and gave him a drink. And the other said, Wait a bit, let's see if Elijah is going to come and rescue him. But Jesus shouted out loudly one more time and then breathed his last. At that instant, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, and the tombs burst open. Many bodies of the sleeping holy ones were raised. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went to the holy city where they appeared to several people. When the centurion and others with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and heard the things that were happening, they were scared out of their wits. He really was God's son, they said. Several women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and given him assistance. They included Mary Magdalena, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. This is God's word for God's people. I want to say thanks be to God. became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. from heaven Jesus Messiah Lord of all So it seems in this passage that darkness and sadness have come just surrounded and overshadowed the land of the living. After all, Jesus cries out, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Holy One, Jesus, who knows who he is, knows his vocation, knows his calling, knows his identity. He calls out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To our ears, that sounds like defeat, destruction, 
death. If Jesus is abandoned at the hour of need, how much more me? Recently, someone shared with me their greatest fear is dying alone. But the good news, the psalm that Jesus quoted is, holds that in that first verse, though it, it looks dark, it's not the last verse. All the way through the 18th verse, it seems like all is lost. It really seems like a shadowing, a foreshadowing of uh, the crucifixion. The dogs surround me and my joints are all out of place. My heart has turned to wax. They pierce my hands and my side. They cast a lot from my clothes. All of it's there in Psalm 22. But up through verse 18, it, it all sounds like this, but 18 isn't the last verse. After that, the psalmist declares that God is my strength, that everything will turn around, that the ends of the earth, because of the confession of this psalmist, people will come to trust in God. This crucifixion is the coronation of the king. Jesus said, I won't drink wine until I drink anew in the kingdom of God. And there, as he is about to die, the kingdom has come. He wouldn't accept the drink before the coronation, but in the midst of it, while he's hanging there, he does. And he had told James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that they could not have the right and left when he came into his kingdom because those were for other people. And they crucified a brigand on his right and on his left. This is the coronation of the king. This is the moment the kingdom of God, the revolution of God begins comes with death and sorrow and fear. But for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it comes with promise and hope and a power that cannot be undone. Every Easter, Adam Hamilton says, the worst thing is not the last thing. We're in a dark time right now. There's a lot of sorrow and suffering. There are people who die alone. But if we believe the good news, no one is ever alone. And death is not the last word. Let's pray. Darkness falls upon us all. Son of God crucified calls to us to take our cross unwanted but required. Lord, help me die with you to find His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. For the whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinner, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Uh, Jesus Messiah by Chris Tomlin and uh, that's 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 a pretty powerful song
I know I like it. Well, from all of us here at Christ UMC, thank you for joining us this week on Daily Office. Until next time, we'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, and God bless. <laughs>